So what we will do in thermoforming is we will exceed the properties of the raw resin normally, if processed correctly. What? You exceeded the properties of the raw materials? Is thermoforming some sort of, I don't know, magic art form? Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Rob. And we're here with our thermoforming part gurus. Our part gurus from New Jersey. And a plant in Georgia. Today we're here with Bob Carrier, the owner of CNK Plastics, and David Grice, the vice president of sales, to Are answer our questions about thermoforming. Aren't they one of the largest thermoformers in the country? I think they are, and that's uh, why we're glad they're... to have them with us. Thanks, guys. So, guys, what's the number one thing to know about thermoforming? Thermoforming is the least stressed process in plastics today. That's why the post office chose to do a twin sheet post office pallet out of thermoforming, because they simply did not break. So cracks and failures in plastic parts come from stress. Stress. I have stress all the time. I've been married 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, so seriously, what you're saying is that thermoformed plastic parts are very strong, right? Mm, it's because you don't impart a, a bunch of uh, internal stress in the structure. When you're, when you're blow molding or you're injection molding or you're roto molding, you're taking it up the resin to a melting point and then you're slamming it into a cold tool to, to chill it. And that imparts a lot of stress in the part. So thermoforming doesn't use melted pellets. What's the raw material look like? Thermoforming takes an extruded sheet, anneals it to a zero stress state where it's just below its glass transition point, and then we thermoform it around a tool that's typically about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So you form it around a tool, you mean with pressure or with a vacuum? Maybe I should explain, all of this is vacuum forming. All of the material is heated, and then vacuum evacuates the trapped air. Can you show us the process? Okay, this is our sheet out of the oven. Notice the sag. The mold is gonna come down into the sheet. The vacuum is going to evacuate the trapped air, and atmospheric pressure will finish forcing the material up against the tool fans will kick on and the cooling process will start. It will stay in this position until we have reached, the material has reached below the deflection temperature. So this will take a couple of minutes. You see the fan is now kicked on and when it's below deflection temperature, we'll index around, we'll start the process again. Okay, the mold is now separating. The part's gonna index around and a new sheet of plastic will come out and contact the mold. So is it vacuum or pressure? In some operations like this, we use a female mold and we pressure form it. In the operation like you saw with the big black part, we are using just vacuum to evacuate the trapped air on a male tool. So why do you want pressure? Why do you need pressure in the forming process? The reason for using the female pressure forming mold here, this customer wanted a lot of detail. He wanted a special texture on this part. He needed to match some injection molded parts. So we run this material to color. We've got a specific texture on the tool. And then we have very fine detail that is actually formed into the part. Now, in the pressure forming process, the detail being on the front side, on the back side of the part is, does not have the detail. As you see, it's not bad looking, but we don't have the detail on the back side. All the detail is on the front side of this part. So vacuum sucks out the excess air, but pressure forces it into the mold where you're trying to get that fine detail to show up in the outside of the part. So that's where it makes it flow. Okay. I see. No wonder uh -huh. you're married 25 years. Ah, 23 years don't mm -hmm. make it worse. Okay, so basically thermoforming is made from a sheet. It involves stronger, larger parts, but what kind of tolerances can you hold? Uh, we can hold as much as five or six thousand tolerances. Is that good? Uh, that, that's good. That's very good. Uh, Ten to fifteen thousandths would be the normal in the process. So that's almost, you're holding twice the tolerance of some other people, looks to me. Are there other parts you can show us? This is a pressure form part. This is the front of an ice machine. What we have done is we pull this into a female tool to get all of this definition. You see the part is smooth here and it's textured here. 
That looks like a painted sheet metal panel. Uh, this was this part was metal. This part was converted from metal to plastic. We do a lot of conversions because of the cost of metal, the cost of stainless steel, also the cost of finishing metal these days. This part was extruded gray, formed gray. We can cut with a CNC machine the vents in it and it's ready to go. All we need to do is put a pad print or a silk screen on the front of it to finish the decoration. This part's ready to go. So speaking of converting metal to plastic, are there any other cool materials you got coming down the pike? Uh, we process, uh, we have a bunch of new materials. We're trying to get into the uh, thermoplastics that are structural in integrity. We're trying to do, go with a glass uh, membrane that we can impregnate in a pressure form part, such as this. So this is a long fiber glass mesh and we're attempting, I don't know if you can pick this up on the camera, but it's embedded between two pressure form parts. So we can take a thermoplastic, which isn't normally a structural or high modulus material, and make it a very high modulus structural component. This is still in the development stage. This is what we really love to do here. It's a lot of fun to experiment with the new materials. It's great to hear another part guru company that's cutting edge like you guys are. What else keeps you state of the art? The Canon behind me is a brand new piece of equipment. It is a European design machine, meaning it's a zero sag. So when we heat up plastic, it's got a melt transition point and it creates a bag is what we call it in the thermal forming industry. And it's a big sag. So when you're doing a very shallow draw part, it's very difficult to do because the piece stretches out and now you got to contain it in a very shallow draw part. With the zero sag machine, there's no sag at all. But any kind of pressure forming or twin sheet forming that we can do with the zero sag, we're gonna be able to control the, the thickness of the part to the T. So which is real critical when you're designing the part and you wanna have some areas thick and some areas thin, you're gonna be able to do it better when you don't have to compete with the sagging of the material. So Bob, how many of your competitors have zero sag machines? Uh, very few. There's probably uh, less than your hands and toes combined of the zero sag machines in North America. Okay, so you mentioned twin sheet. Isn't that where you put two pieces of plastic together in one operation? This is a twin sheet part. What we have done is we have formed two pieces of plastic at the same time. We get them hot, we bring them together, and it's a homogeneous bond between the two, which you see here. The weld happens under 100 PSI in a machine, in a pressure forming machine, and it's, it's inseparable. It, it, the, the molecular structure here is as if it was one solid sheet of material. This is why we're gonna have the zero sag machine to do a part just like this. The beauty of this process is we can cut the material footprint by as much as a third. In other words, we can use two thinner sheets of material to form them into a single part to reduce the material footprint. In doing this, you're going to save money. While we were preparing for this segment, you had mentioned something about forming rugs. The last thing that you would expect at CNK Plastics in Georgia is to see us running auto carpet. But we do different things here. Well, <laughs> uh, this is a carpet for an American auto company. It's uh, got a liner of LDPE, 20,000 thick, with a um, flocked, it's not quite flocked, it's, but it's not stitched, PETG fiber. Um, it's very lightweight, and we, they came to us and asked us if we could thermoform it, and we said probably not, but we'll give it a try. And what we ended up doing is we ended up, this is a um, driver's side carpet for one of the, one of the big car automakers in North America. And it worked out very well. Um, this gets die cut and stitched, and it'll get the logo of the car company on here. But guys, doesn't plastic harm turtles? A hot topic right now is plastic in the environment. What we're doing at CNK, we're trying to eliminate waste. This material is reground scrap that we will send back to our supplier and have it turned into sheet again for, for another project. There's very little waste because either it goes into the finished product or it's reground and goes back into sheet to be reused in a new product. Hey guys, thanks for answering all of our questions. It's great to hear from you all about thermoforming. If you out there want to know anything else about CNK Plastics, and what you could do is you could see all the rest of their videos, take a video tour, contact them. Really use their brains, use their energy, 
use them for your next big plastic project. Because it's people that make parts. Not machines. <laughs>